Hey everyone, it's Time Spiraled. We're back with the uh, second MSCM set submission review. Now, the first video that I did for Diorum Holy War took over an hour. That wasn't the plan, so we are going to go slightly quicker through the low rarities. I would like to maybe get closer to 45 minutes, so we're not going to take too long here. Uh, again, my goal is to provide the people who are submitting the sets a little bit of information on the cards that I like, the cards that I would keep an eye on, any notes or feedback that I see. This is not me giving a grade or a note, that's something that happens privately in council chat. For those of you who aren't quite sure what's going on, please check the video comments. Uh, I'll talk all about what the MSCM submission period is, and if you want to hear a little bit more about it, if you watch the intro to Diorum Holy War, which is the first video in this playlist, you'll be able to hear more. So without further ado, let's jump into IQ Never Sleeps by Nyx. It is a 250 plus 10 special guest set with inspirations from Lobotomy Corp, Training Necessity, Catalepsis, I only know one of these things, Lobotomy Corp. The plane of AQ is a postmodern city plane comprised of almost entirely humans. Most people enjoy their time in seeming paradise, happy and enjoying their eternal blissful lives. Of course, our protagonists mess everything up and unwittingly introduce outside horrors to their city. The store and cards... The story in cards cover themes of stark polarity between hedonism and horror, conflict and acceptance, reality and digitas, and paradise and dystopia. That sounds really exciting, and I've had a chance to look over some of the cards already, so we're in for a treat. Central mechanics in this set are Wayward. You get a bonus when you cast spells from outside your hand. Tales, coming back from MSCM, where you cast a copy of a permanence tale once while it's on the battlefield, so it's like a flipped adventure. Coalesce, you cast an instant or sorcery spell from your graveyard, put it onto the battlefield when it resolves, usually as a creature. Blackout, you can play a card with Blackout face down as a land that produces colorless, and Cash, create a clue or treasure token. So, just like I did with Diorum Holy War, we're going to go commons, uncommons, rares, then mythics, and then we're going to check out the special guests. So, without further ado, here we go. Alrighty, right off the bat, we've got Breaker of Promises. Uh, again, I think what's going to work better is, I'm just going to mouse over, and I'm going to pause at the cards that I feel the need to talk about. Because by stopping at every common, uh, we were taking uh, quite a long time. So I'll just give it a look, and if something seems absolutely fine, I am going to leave it alone. So, for example, Breaker of Promises is a 3-3 three, three for 3. When it enters or leaves, you get a 1-1, one, one, but you have to sack it unless you pay white. So this card's fine. I don't see that it would be a problem in Constructed. Um, I was talking a lot about maybe Limited in Diorum, but I think I'm going to have to leave that a little bit on the side. Otherwise, oh boy, it's just going to take us too long. What I'll try and do, though, is get a draft of each of these sets that have a Limited in the future and do a draft video there. But I think for now, we need to focus on Constructed, and uh, I'll I'll zoom just a little bit more uh, through these early cards here. So, uh, Affinity for Humans is fine at 4 mana. This is fine. Nice. Nice. Uh, Flaneur, love the name. This is quite nice. It enters a uh, exiles a creature and enchantment or a planeswalker, so not exactly everything. Um, but you can also pay two and white to uh, bring it back to its owner's hand, so could be interesting. I am going to point out that the way I did it with Diorum is I was writing down the cards that I had some concerns over, as well as the cards that I was uh that I liked a lot, and one of the things I'm going to do is rather than put a skull like I used to, is I just put a little eye, or in this case a magnifying glass, and I just say, hey, something to keep in mind. So what I'm concerned with the blackout mechanic is that it's functionally just a, a modal double-faced card, just like we've seen in like Zendikar Rising. My little issue is that the cards come in and provide untapped mana, even though it's colorless. So if you can get a density where you can always guarantee the land, that could be an issue. So I'm just going to put that. I want to keep an eye on Blackout. Looking through, the card effects have seemed pretty balanced. So that I'm not too concerned of. And shout out to the card frame looking absolutely fantastic. It's a great way of signaling these cards in your hand and for the opponent. Um, I'm assuming that um, just like more if you, at the end of the game, you'd have to just reveal the cards to, to prove that they were blackout lands. So uh, yeah, that's, that's that's pretty much it. I guess another cool thing is you can rescue them, but you could already do that with the MDFCs. So off we go. Lean on me. Interesting. All right, so something gets removed. You can also remove it and you can tap. Very nice. Uh, here's our first example of a tail. You'll notice that rather than being on the left like adventure, they're on the right. Uh, and it's you cast it once on the field. So 
This one makes a bunch of 1-1s, one and then the next turn, you give everything plus 2, plus 2 in Vigilance. If you can get... Well, not the next turn, but when you get to 7. So, very cool. Uh, nice to see Artist as a creature type back. Uh, we've got Lonely Medium. This seems fine. Again, I think maybe a little crop. You could get it to two lines with the flavor text without the text looking too... Too... Uh, crushed, but something to keep in mind. Okay, another blackout card. I'm not going to bring it up every time I see it. It's most of them, the front half is fine and the back half is a untapped colorless. So just something to keep in mind is if we get a density of these, it's functionally adding a bunch of modal double face cards to the format. And if the effect is too strong, well, you know, something to keep in mind. All right, nightmarish actors. Yep, seems fine. Again, a little, these little. This is not something I would ever change someone's grade on. It's just, I know personally, I always like getting that crop so that there's not a little uh, hanging off here. Um, a Voyage, Exile Creature, or Enchantment you control, return to the battlefield, and if you cast it from outside your hand, repeat it twice. So we've got Flashback here as well, so that it's not just Coalesce. All right, so Flicker. It's a fast Flicker, though, something to keep in mind, and you do it twice. So for seven, you triple Flicker something. Very interesting. It doesn't always have to be the same one, I believe. Off on a date. Okay, cool. This is interesting. This is kind of like a... Uh, um, gosh, what's the blue one? I'm, I'm blanking so hard. It's uh, in Bloomborough. I, I'm sure I'm... It's My gosh, run away together. Okay, so it's very, very similar to run away together, except you, you flicker both things. Very interesting. I like it. Uh, out of order. Neat. Very interesting. Uh, a non-land mana value 1 actually hits a lot of things that are strong in the format, but being exactly mana value 1 is, is the difference between 1 and 2 is, is huge. Um, and then, of course, if you cast a spell from outside your hand, you can exile it. Cool card. I think it's fine in the format, and I would like to see it there, so I'm not going to flag it. Um, I think one of my issues with the set is there's a lot of cards that uh, I'm going to like. So maybe my heart is just going to say everything or most of things because there's just a lot of cards here that i'm seeing that i think are are cool uh functionally playful record is very cool makes a human and you sack it seems safe um interesting technopath renegade leaves if it wasn't blocking you can exile it then you can pay two to put it back in your hand so it's like a recurring two two this seems kind of annoying and limited uh if you can keep attacking and even if they trade into it the fact that you don't have to pay two right away it's just any later point you can pay four and get another two two something to keep in mind um at least it doesn't block so it doesn't stall the game but you know uh witness if you cast a spell you get a one one for three that's fine no with my thoughts draw a card look at the top five cards of your library don't change their order i, I kind of like that actually that's cute i don't think it beats out the stuff that have like scryer surveil but it's a very interesting uh card 2-1 for 2, and you can pay blue to return a creature or Planeswalker to owner's hand. That's actually not horrible. The fact, that's a really cheap tail. Essentially, think of it as a um, Mana War that you can drop on turn 2 if you really need the body early. But if you just do it on turn 3, uh, the fact you can hit a creature or Planeswalker, this seems really good. Crossroads Wayfarer. 3 for Surveil, 2 draw a card as a tail, 1, 2 for blue. Yep, seems fine. Sometimes it's nice to see the tails being more expensive or, or vice versa. Like, this one is very much on cost, right? So, Edge of Realism, it's a cancel. And if you didn't cast it from your hand, you cash twice. So, Clue, Clue, or Treasure, Treasure. Double Treasure off a counter could be interesting. The fact that it's 3 mana, though, makes it harder to cast out of the graveyard. Um, we don't have an issue with, like, Cane Dancer in our format, who only gets the ones that cost 2. Three should be decently safe. All right, so let's check out the uh, revelations. So I have always had an issue with Coalesce as a mechanic and the fact that the bodies are often so good and the fact that like the flashback sometimes is on rate enough for the effect, but then you also get a big body. In this case, I'm happy to see that put a flying counter for blue is not the strongest thing, but then when you pay six, um, I believe, yeah, you can't put the flying counter on it, so it just becomes a 3-5 reach. So in this case, I think the two halves are balanced. I think this is a safe uh, revelation. Again, the flavor, the art, things are really cool. It's not something that I think I would necessarily have, have made or, or could make, because I'm not in this, in this kind of field, but I think it's a very pretty set so far. So, Loss of the Music, the Lockdown Aura, and you Surveil 2 when it hits. Vigilance, Wayward... Can't be blocked, that seems fine. 
See, this one's not horrible. You black out or it's removal, so stuff to keep in mind. Ponder infinite misfortunes. The blue surveil one. That's under the that's it's like under the bar of what you would expect, but you pay three and you get a two-two flyer. This feels safe. I like that. Prophecy Flood. This is the kind of one where I'm a little more concerned where it's a late game draw three, which is fine. But if you draw it early, it's just a land, right? So these are pretty good modal double face. And there's quite a few. I think we saw how many in white? One, two. Are we going to see? Is there only two in blue? We've got Brink, Prophecy Flood. Okay, it seems to be two at common seems to be the norm. So we'll see at the uncommons when we get there. Tap to Surveil 1. I like that. That's cool. Rhythm Seer. You conjure a divination if it entered and if you've cast another spell from outside your hand. Very interesting. I kind of like that. Ripples of Tomorrow returns a creature, planeswalker, or token. That's actually kind of nice. And you cash if you've cast a spell from outside your hand this turn. Very cool. Just going to make sure I didn't misread. Okay, no, this isn't Wayward. It's it, it wasn't... If it wasn't cast from hand. Okay, okay. Just making sure that it's not if you've cast a spell from outside. Uh, this seems not horrible. There's a lot of ways of casting spells from outside your hand between all the flashback, and we have a lot of mechanics that have... Uh, Exiled and cast from exile, so something to keep in mind. Um, pretty flexible removal too. I like that it hits just tokens. That's actually kind of cool. Uh, two three that enters you cash flexible. I like it. Whenever you surveil, triggers only twice. I always like it when there's when there's kind of like a, a rider to make sure that things don't get too out of hand, especially as a three four flying for five in at, at common. So surveil it becomes a five five and it could then become a seven six. This could almost only trigger one. It would still probably be fine, honestly. Once each turn, you cast a spell from outside your hand, you cash. Yep, cool. 2-2 two, two flyer for three. Incomplete is each player sacks a creature. Yep, that seems fair. Flash, minus two, minus two. This is for five. This seems fun and limited. So consciousness not found costs one less for each card in your graveyard. You exile, it has blackout. All right, see, so yeah, so this one's a little tougher, but you know, you can mill pretty easily in MSCM and the fact that it's any card so removal that can also be a land, something to keep in mind. Accountant dies if it wasn't blocking, you cash 2-1 lifelink. Thank you for all this if it wasn't blocking. I like it when a, a limited pushes the game to a close rather than stalling. Reveals their hands, discard a card, you lose a life with blackout. So you don't pick the card, you just get to see what's in their hand and you do lose 2 life. But a lot of, a lot of flexible, you know, so late game, they have nothing. Uh, Honestly, the fact that late game, even if they're bluffing and holding up a land, like you can still take out a land, but oh. Dreamer's Bane, whenever it or another creature dies, each opponent loses one life, triggers only twice. Okay, something to keep in mind. Um, I, on, on digital, you just, you know, you keep track. It happened once, it happened twice, right? Uh, bring back a creature, get a human, that's fine, and it's a sorcery speed too, so no issues there. Uh, three mana for a 2-2 two, two death touch, and then you have to pay eight for a 4-4-2-2, four, four, two, two. yeah, that's on par, that's fine. Draw a card, lose a life. If you cast it from outside your hand, repeat this process twice. So it's draw three, lose three. So, okay, this is one that I might have to flag just because any card that either impulses it or um, you can cast it from the yard, draw three, lose three for one mana. Again, I know it has flashback, but there's ways of getting it without the flashback. So it's the kind of card that I probably would want to keep an eye on. Even if it repeated once and you drop the flashback, probably be a little safer, but something to keep in mind. Malevolent Heartbreaker. Plus two, plus two, as long as you control another human. And then when it dies, everyone has like, that's kind of sad. That's a, that's a sad story right there. Card is all right. Uh, never let go. Creature if it has power or toughness, two or less. And then if you've cast a spell from outside your hand, this turn Servile too. I am just going to check real quick on our search engine. Twilight Ambush, the short target creature with power or toughness, two or less. And this has seen some play. I'm not necessarily sure that it needed a surveil boost, but, you know, something to keep in mind. Um, we don't necessarily want to strictly better um, removal that's already somewhat playable. Not that we haven't, you know, Twilight Ambush hasn't been seen in, in so long, but there's a reason it has three layers, like, you know. Oracle, enters release from his fine. Pupil, yep. Surveil, draw, lose. Watch this on Fade. So Exile up to 2, and then 6 gives you 4-6. Coalesce only as a sorcery is such a good line of text on Instant Revelations. I'm a big fan. Witness of No Return. That's fine. Wiry's Frontrunner. Okay, this is kind of funny. So we have a we have a card in the format called, you know... 
my gosh, where are you? Should be at the very bottom. Irie the Daring Blade, and I believe if the, yeah, so the original card, you know, I think it's just kind of funny. The art's very, very similar to the original MSCM Jumpstart art. That's cool. And this one was a 2-1 whenever it and exactly one other creature attack, it and that creature can be blocked by creatures with mana value 3 or less. And this one is once she's turn when you put one or more cards from your library into your graveyard, it gets plus one plus one in Menace. Okay, it does a similar evasion thing, but I, I guess the it's just the art reference. The mechanic one doesn't quite quite fit. Corrupted Angelic Songs, discard draw it instant for red, and then Coalesce gives you a 3-3. That seems fair. 3 damage to a creature, 3 damage to you with Blackout. Okay, I can I can dig that kind of uh, balancing. Fiery Erasure is a reprint. Nice new art. I think that person is like strapped with uh, dynamite. So, what's the flavor text? When the world goes to hell, so does the price of quality pyrotechnics. Interesting. Yeah, it's 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 a great piece of removal. Foul tongued acolyte. If you cast a revelation or a horror entered, it gets plus two plus zero and menace one two haste. I will f just flag it just for the fact that we do have an interesting card in the format called Polyp Pools uh, that is a kindred land, so it could be a horror. So if you drop it, it becomes a 3-2 menace haste. Just something to keep in mind. Frustrated Artist enters tapped, and when you exile it, you pay one to create a token. It's a copy of it. Nice. I like that this plays into it. Um, very neat. I wonder how... I wonder if you can loop that with anything. Um... Hmm. There's cards that make copies and then you exile the tokens. Something to keep in mind. I don't think it's a problem, but the fact it's a two mana. No, I, I think it's fine. Well, it, it, it seems clunky or not clunky, but it seems restrictive enough that uh, it's probably fine. Haste, make the tap treasure. That's fine. Treasure can't block and then you get a five, three minutes for five. Yep, I think that one's all right. Destroy an artifact for two, three. Yep. Okay, see, this one's on rate, right? Gain a creature, gain a top. My pardon. Gain control of a creature or planeswalker. Untap it haste with blackout. See, that's that's fine. Not that I think this necessarily sees constructed play, but when you have a density, you know, maybe that's that's the tipping point. Okay, enters with three haste counters, and it's a one. This is actually really cool. I think this is the f not that there hasn't been cards that I haven't liked, but I actually think this design is 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 sweet, and it is definitely a reason to finally print a haste counter. This is kind of cool. Moving haste counters around. Art is very cool too. Uh, yep, that's safe, especially because it's artifact token and it costs four. That's fine. Red flags is fine. Two, two menace for two, not bad. And when you create an artifact token, plus one, plus one. Thank God it's not a counter. This is probably fine. Whenever a creature you control enters this turn. Okay, so we got a flag waiting for you. Uh, it's got that kind of, um, first day, or was it first day of school or... And then if you've cast a spell from outside your hand, you add red, red for creatures. I, this does a lot in the package. Um, and the fact that it's whenever a creature control enters this turn, uh, so you fire and forget, and then you create a bunch of stuff. So definitely want to keep an eye on that. Um, and if you cast anything from outside your hand, the fact that it refunds itself and more for creatures. So want to keep an eye. Uh, this is fine. This is fine. Yeah. So it's two if you cast a spell from outside your hand. Yeah, I think this is fine. Colossal Metal Maw. Okay, I dig it. Love it. Uh, trample 6-6, six, six, but when it dies, you cash twice. This is very playable and limited, I'm sure. Like, God Mode. Very cool name. Plus one, plus one. Gains Indestructible, becomes a god, and then Blackout. So this is the kind of card where, yeah. So protection that you can main board for Blackout. All right. Cool. Shopkeeper. You can return a land to its owner's hand. You conjure forest onto the battlefield tapped. Interesting. It's not create a token, so it really is a basic forest land. Neat. I mean, it's essentially you've drawn a land, right? Because that one that you use to cast it goes back to your hand. You get a tapped forest and you can replay. So this is actually quite good. It's, it's pulling off a very... Is there really a, like, this is, is this better than Steve? Like, all right, let's just keep an eye on it. Very interesting here. Future Vigilance, taps, taps, and when you cast a spell, untap. Probably fine. It's, it's a lot here, but I don't think there's really a way to chain. I think this is fine. Yep, Midnight Alley Hunters looks fine. Street Cleaner... Looks fine. This is a bite. 
where you grow equal to the excess damage dealt. That could be kind of scary. Like you have a five, three or four. you have a, you have like a four, one, and then you hit a one and you grow it by three and then you swing for seven. I don't think it's, it's going to see any, it could be a problem constructed, but that seems really good. Rainbow Seeker, when it dies, you put a Paradise Counter on a permanent and it gains tap, add one mana. That's pretty cool. Especially if you got like little artifact tokens lying around. 2-2 two, two Reach. Yeah, okay. Just grows by the number of creatures you control attack. Seems fine. The Master creates a Hydra, where X is the number of tokens you control. Yeah, that's fine. 7th uh, Street Stalker. Once each turn. Always nice to see a Rider. Cool. Yep, that's fine. Next time, one or more count creatures you control would enter. Not counters. Creatures would enter. They enter with two plus one plus one counters and a trample counter. It's the fact that it's they each. So what? You pay two and then you create three tokens with, with some effect, maybe. Um, and they're really big and trampley. I don't think that's going to be an issue because of the way you have to line it up. And it's the next, so it doesn't work with, you know, just going to little little eye on that. Traverse the city gets a basic or a station. That's fine. You'll see the stations right below. Void Tyrant. You can cast it back from the graveyard. Plus one, plus one finality. That's fine. Seems really good and limited, you know. The 3 5 reach for 5 that then dies into a 4 6 for 5. Yeah, it's pretty good, actually. Uh, yeah. Plus one, plus one, or trample. Yeah, these are all fine. All right, so the stations all do the same thing. It's tap for a colorless, one and a tap, so Shimmering Grotto, you pay. But then if ever you don't need it that turn, you can float that mana into the tail, which is always ticket to a location, I believe. And then this land becomes a, a duel. So the first turn, you can always convert it to a Mountain Plains. Um, it's the fact that it, you can choose to have it be untapped on the turn you need it makes it's not a worse tap land, but something to keep in mind. There's 10 of them, right? So it's 7th and 10th and intersection. So 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah, they go down. And it's kind of odd that they put them here in the multicolor, but that's because of the tail. Just weird little thing that, that happens. Mephisto's Gate is a reprint. It's Terminate. Create three tokens. That's fine. Three, three flyer. Yep, that's good. Humanity perseveres. Counter on each creature for two. And then other creatures you control. Oh, I misread that. Plus one plus a counter on each token creature. So permanent growth on your tokens and your others get plus one. This is safe. Uh, more tickets. Very cool. Moonlit Lantern Festival. You get a plains, a mountains, and a swamp into your hand for two. I think I'm going to have to flag that one because, yeah, you're not obviously playing them all right away, but anything that lets you play like additional land drops or triggers off of wanting to get to five colors, being able to not run the plains mount. I don't know. I feel like drawing three basics has definitely not cost two before. So even though... Um, it might not necessarily be the ones that you want. Something to keep in mind is just whenever I see this kind of amount of thing on a card, I do want to keep an eye on it. So it's on my watch list. Authentication, it costs one in a black less if it targets an artifact, one in a green less if it targets a token, and it just destroys a permanent. That's actually really good. So it's one in a green if it hits an artifact permanent. It's one in a black if it targets a permanent token and then if it's an artifact token permanent it's free cool kind of cool actually i like it reckless aspirations exile the top two until the end of your next turn you may play those cards for two so instead of drawing an exile it's impulsing both okay something to keep in mind i think it's fine but someone who's better versed in how uh this card might play might say hey that's that's a lot of value i don't know i i I think it's I think it's all right. It's instant speed, so even if you do it at that person's end step, it's still the end of your next turn. It just means you don't have to pay on your turn, so it leaves you a little more flexible. But you need to be red green. I mean, honestly, it could be a reason to be red green. I'll I think that's all right. Retcon: Change any targets of target spell over the targets you or permanent you control. If you don't counter that spell, that seems actually really good. Might be worth keeping an eye on on everything that it targets because that's what. Someone throws a shock at you or a, a bolt, it hits them instead. And if it doesn't have any targets, it simply counters for white blue. Is this like a, just a strictly better? I mean, it depends on the targeting, but it seems like an almost strictly better. Let me see something. You may change any targets of target spell or. Okay, no, you know what? It's, it has to target you or permanent you control. Okay, so that's. 
it's not necessarily better okay good i was worried that we were just seeing like a counter spell for white blue with upside no it has to target your permanent you control but then you can change targets or um counter it okay okay that's fine uh two one haste lifelink okay neat more stations more stations more stations strange electric dreams <laughs> you get a sheep for three and then if you sack two artifact tokens you get another sheep for free that's cute um three three trample for four when you cast a spell from outside it gets a counter neat that's actually a really good generic so i talked to nix about this this is a heck of a statement it's a three sorcery for draw two i i think i'm okay with it I don't know if any deck in Constructed will run this kind of card. It could be weird for uh, a Mono Green to just have three draw two, but it's not harmonized. I don't know. It's something to keep in mind. I don't think it's going to be an issue. Um, I'm sure uh, maybe Council will want to talk about it, but I think it's it's the value is low enough. My one issue with it is that this is the kind of instant or sorcery that can eventually cost zero if you have things that make it cost less. And then drawing two off of either two or one is where it starts getting a little scary so let's let's keep an eye on it for with the cost reductions less so than with the color problem prismatic eternity yep looks great and wayfarer shrine at common fixing so yeah it is prismatic vista but in our format we've had this for years and a few people have put it at common so it looks it looks fine Alrighty, uncommon here we go traveler exile up to one creature control yep Sure, this seems fine. Nice little... If ever we get a human's deck, this isn't horrible removal. Uh, creature with mana value 1 or less if you drop this on 2, and then as long as you're building up your humans, you can get pretty much everything. Um, alrighty. New Reed gets an artifact card with an activated ability for a tail. Yeah, it's probably fine. Um, Cat Lover. Cool. Kind of gives me uh, some flashbacks to like Kaladesh kind of stuff, you know. 2-1-1 Menaces. That's a little odd, though, that a Mona White is making cards with Menace. I think I have to actually just keep an eye on that for Color Pie, but not that not that White doesn't get Evasion, like it straight up gets Flying, but I know that cards making tokens, with it's, it's something that might be a little contentious, so something to keep in mind. Sacrifice a token, a creature you control gains lifelink. Okay. Sacks a non-token artifact or enchantment with Blackout. Pretty good, pretty good pairing here. DS Ray. Each player draws three. You can exile a card from your hand, and if you do, you destroy all creatures. That's a uh, five mana uncommon board wide. Okay, let's see. Each player draws three. If you go down a card, so you've given your opponent three cards and you've drawn two, you destroy all creatures. This doesn't seem... I mean, again, giving your opponent three cards is not good. I'm not going to say it is, but this is really interesting. Geeson, Sunrise Renegade, Pro Gods, once each turn... Okay, interesting. I know some people don't like white draw, so it might be something to keep an eye on. Laniel, Flying Visions for 4, Exile. Okay, you can put it back in its owner's hand. Alright, it costs so much, I don't think this will be an issue. Make Believe Together, you may have any number of target players draw a card. So, it could be a white enchantment enter, you draw. And whenever a spell or ability you control causes an opponent to draw one or more cards, you get a 2-1. Maybe worth keeping an eye on this one? Do we really need to? It's a white draw card. I mean, white has had cantrips before. It's an enchantment, though, so, like, you know, white can flicker. I don't know. I think it's probably fine, because if you have the other player draw a card, you're at card equity, but it comes with a 2-1. It's only spells or abilities that you control. Okay, it's probably fine. Parasol Bearer, 3-3 three, three Defender, and then it shields up. Cool. Okay, some more humans. This one grows, then you can sacrifice it to search for a human with mana value less than equals power. Cool. The Scarlet Citron. Oh, I like these enchantments that kind of like our place names. I hope there's I hope there's a cycle. I'm, 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 we'll, we'll look in a second. I hope it's a cycle. You draw. Create a one. Sure. Two life. Exile a non-land permanent until end step. That's probably fine. Exile a card from your hand. So it's a 2 for a 2-2. Two, two. Hey, we've got a bear. There we go. And when Akane leaves, you can conjure two duplicates of a card exiled by them. Is there a way 
to do dumb shit with this. Under two duplicates exiled by them into your hand, and then if you have another way, and it's a leaves the battlefield, so not a die. So if you flicker, I don't know, might might be worth just keeping an eye on. So yeah, you can already see that this set is doing a lot more complicated things already at common and uncommon than the previous set that we looked at, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just it's a different thing, right? So when you conjure, you tap something, or untap. Neat. Okay, I like that it's a penguin gamer. We got some fun stuff in here. If you cast it for an alternative cost or from outside your hand, you get two one one blue elemental creature tokens with flying. That could do a lot. Doesn't do anything on impact, but then afterwards, that's a lot. That's that's a lot of uncapped tokens, you know. Let's put a little note on it. Gear shift, you cash, and beginning of combat, you can put a counter on an artifact token. Sure. Non-creature spells surveil one, second one, draw a card. Yep. Kai Kaiku. Target player reveals their hand, you draw, and it's got flashback. Is this just like think twice on is think twice an instant? It's been a long time since I haven't looked at think twice. Okay, think twice is an instant. Alright, that's probably fine. Uh something gets flashback. For one and a blue with blackout that one could be a little more concerning it's the kind of stuff when the front half is already almost fine and then blackout saves it let's see draw two for three instant see that one's already on par and then it also has coalesce seven you get a five five all right smoke sign mystic like this is the kind of stuff where you would imagine it would be like draw two then discard a card two and a blue or something you know i wonder what the uh Let's do a real quick check. I want to see what it was again. Um, it was dig for one. Counter unless it pays one. Yeah. Well, this one was kind of on 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 level, but more situational. Something to keep in mind. This one, this one, just the fact that the front half is you know just drawing. Smoke sign, cash for each spell you've cast, and it costs six. So, um, ah, uh, there we go. So it's, it's got, you pay five in a blue and you exile it, and then at the beginning of your next end step, you cast it without paying its cost, which would let you maybe cash a bunch of stuff. Very interesting. It's interesting if you flicker, right? Swallow the moon, return a target permanent you control to its owner's hand, blue instant. See, that's a good rescue here. And then it coalesces into a three, five. Again, coalesce only as a sorcery. I'm really happy to see it on these cards. Hey, it is, it is a cycle, sweet. So the crystal moon, draw a card for blue. And you can choose an adventure or tale of a permanent you control, you may cast a copy of it. That seems really good for just one mana. This is the kind of thing I would have imagined would be more reasonable or safer. At two? You can give, so because turn one you just play it. Obviously you don't have a, a a tale or an adventure right away, but there's some tales that are really good and should not be, you know, not necessarily should not be repeated, but um we have we have uh, some cards in the format that have like you know take an extra turn tail so something to keep in mind. Trinket Princess, you have your end step. You can cast a copy without paying its mana cost. Dang! All right. Does this just I think your end step cast a copy? Okay, but it doesn't count as the tail being told. So I guess you can keep doing it. So it just makes a treasure or a clue every turn. Yeah. All right. A little bit messed up. One less for each. Okay, this turn. It's lose all abilities, becomes a human, destroys it. Very neat. Sack a creature token. It'll be a counter. Yeah, okay, it's already at, at four. I think we're safe on this one. And very, very cute. You may sack a creature a token. It's very, very cute. Return a creature revelation from your graveyard to your hand for one is not horrible. Five, three, four, six is, is balanced. So that's fine. Uh, Eminence Adept. Cool. All right. Yeah, five mana search. That's cool. Minus one, minus one. Remove a loyalty from each. Not horrible. Not going up to minus two, minus two makes a big difference, but you know. Uh, go blank is from Strixhaven, I believe, so that's that's fine. Discard two, exile. Pay two life. Okay, so this is like a flip of here with you. So the opponent pays two. If they did, you get to draw two cards. Otherwise, you get a four, four. So your opponent can just say, nah, you can one black, you get a, a vanilla four, four. 
probably it's 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 fine the fact that your opponent gets the choice means they'll always pick the one that they can deal with uh and if they can deal with a 4-4 black horror they'll just let you do that uh but that's not horrible stats you know so might be worth keeping in mind the fact that it doesn't go wide though is easier to deal with okay draw a card so we're seeing this, this little cycle here once during each of your turns cast a creature from your graveyard paying one black in addition to the other costs so three you have to pay an extra one and a black i feel this could probably do some stuff um I wonder, they, they resemble a lot the um, journey cards from Tales of Old Jedi, so something to keep in mind. The fact that they just draw a card on enter, though, is you know obviously nice, because otherwise they wouldn't do much right off the bat, but just casting a creature for one and extra black could be really good. Okay, this is kind of funny, how we have a Splintered Soul here. Uh, we do actually have some a, a Pokemon fan set in the format called uh, Monsters of GQ. So it's funny to see one showing up here on other places. So it's a 2-1 that enters tap for black. If you've cast a Horror or Revelation spell not named Splintered Soul, it uh, goes back from your graveyard to your hand. That's a lot of recursion. And Horrors is a playable type, so something to keep in mind on Splintered Soul. Stargaze, twice X cards... Put X cards into your hand, you lose X life. All right. So for, let's say, you pay the first one, you look at the top two, you get one. Yeah, it's, that's, that's fine. Minus three, minus three, instant revelation for black, black, and then you can pay four, five, seven for a four, three. Okay, I'm glad the back half is very reasonable for what it is. This seems fine. Valyria is Yuwari's second. Whenever you put one or more cards from your library into your graveyard, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Triggers only twice. Um... That's kind of scary, actually, even though it triggers twice, because it's like mill one, mill one, and then they lose four life, you gain four life, and you can do that each turn. Okay, might have to flag uh, Valyria here. Like, if it was one and one, that would be very different, but two and two is actually big and trigger twice. Revels. Yep, okay, that's actually pretty good, but I think it's fine. Each card in exile... 3-3 three, three Lancer, yeah, okay. It's kind of funny if your opponent just like nukes your graveyard and then you drop a 3-3 three, three for 2 that deals 3 dash on your target. Exile top card for each color of mana spent to cap. We're just seeing a one-off converge. I mean, hey, if wizards can do it, why can't we? Um, for each color of mana spent to cast it. So you're either paying 1, 3, or 5. You'll exile that many and you can until the end of your next turn you can play those cards. So it's either a red draw... Draw two, or pardon, draw three. Yeah. If you can get the three mana, I think that's where it shines, right? You exile the top three, and then next turn you have three cards to play with. Probably good. Emberfly. When you finish exiling, you get a 2-1 with flying and decayed. All right. Neat. Ward, pay life equal to its power, and your horrors also have that. And they also get plus one, plus one. Jeez, this is really good. Red Hot Racer deals 2 damage to each creature that didn't crew it this turn, but then you have to sacrifice it. That's a 5-4 for crew 3. Um, interesting. Um, I mean, you can just crew... What is it? You throw your whole board into it, and then you attack, and it's a 5-2. Might be worth keeping an eye on Red Hot Racer. Redshift, create a token as a copy of target creature. Yeah, this is pretty good. Maybe I'll put Red Hot Racer and Redshift just in case. I think the fact that it's not like haste or anything probably makes it fine, but never worth it. Redshift, though, could be could be really good. There's there's combos with this kind of effect, so. I'm sorry if you're hearing that noise. It's my cat's food bowl. Finally giving them some uh, some morning breakfast, so. Rival of the Sound Core. Exile. Sure. Okay. You can pay two as a source to put it back in your hand. The fact that this continuously loops, though, is uh, is, is is really good. But again, a safe-ish mana value. Two one. This is actually not horrible. I think it's fine. It would be nice to see actually. Uh, two one humans. They gain haste. In the beginning of the next combat, it deals one damage to each creature. Woo. Okay. That's really interesting. You create two one ones. They have haste, but if you didn't cast it, no, I think being of the next combat. 
weird. Do they just like, is it just like death triggers? Because you won't be able to attack with it because it's the next combo. If you cast it at your second main, it'll happen during the opponent's one. Weird, but neat. Wield the strength of the stars, five mana. Yeah, I remember wanting to flag that one just because if you can go four, then you go into five mana and then you can, there's, there's some weird stuff you can do. I think it's probably fine, but whenever I see big, big rituals, and especially if you can do it from the yard, there's some some weird things you can do. Xenon Cabaret, there we go, there's the red one. Beginning of your first main phase, you can discard a card to exile the top two. You can play one of those cards this turn, and it draws. Probably fine, probably... The fact that it's only the one of... Yeah, I'm gonna keep in mind. Brawler, 2-2, two, two. when you conjure one or more cards or create one or more tokens, put a counter. Date night, food. Oh, if you create one or more tokens, get an additional food. That's neat. And then you can pay five tap to create two one ones. Botanist spends mana for each counter on it, but you can only use it for mana value five or greater or X. Cool. Actually, very neat card. Three for four trample conjures forests, and then you can put into battlefield tapped. Cool. I'm glad that it's also forests. Uh, this just turns all your stations into tap, add one mana, and it untaps. So I guess if stations see play, you play this. I don't think it will see so construct a play. When you put one or more cards from your library into your graveyard, it gets plus two, plus two. Okay, this can grow pretty big, but again, three mana. Like, it's fine. And the tail is pretty strong. Mill five, return all land cards, but you gotta get there. Off the rails, affinity for stations probably fine. <laughs> Target creature gets plus X, plus X trample, and it fights, yeah. Uh, that seems fine. Rustic Spirits Tavern, five draw a card, your creature tokens get plus two plus in trouble. This one's, this one's fine. Search Query, bring back a card, it's got Blackout. This is almost, this is exactly like the green one, right? Um, yeah, it's Balaged Recovery, but instead of getting a tapped for green, you get an untapped colorless. All right. I mean, Balaged Recovery is, is fine. Like there's a reason it's a $5 card. Uh, Fervent Conductor, affinity for tokens, can't be blocked. Enters with X plus one plus counters, yeah. Horror Artist, there's some cool, there's some cool art going around here. Wall Stained Red, for each card type, you can exile a card of it from your graveyard, and then you can pay two to keep getting them back. Thank you, thank you for exiling itself. Uh, modified Humans, you control or cats in addition to their other types. Okay, I feel like you probably want to have the modified rule text here. Um, uh, cat humans get plus one plus one and have trample. It's kind of funny. It's a two, two, two. If a human gets a counter, it then becomes a cat and it gets plus one, one trample. This is this is kind of cute and neat. Uh, Heiress of Dead Hours. Surveil two. Menace whenever you surveil, you can return. Okay. From your graveyard to your hand. Anything that just keeps coming back is is a lot of value. So something to keep in mind. Let's just put. A little note there and again when i say keep an eye on it doesn't mean the card is busted or that like it's it's not okay it just means i i want to keep an eye on it things that come back things that generate a lot of value is, is worth keeping an eye on uh kano token creatures you control get plus one plus zero and tap for mana pretty good and then you can pay one to create tokens that's that's really good so it makes two ones that have makes two one mana dorks every turn if you pay the one it's not bad evans Search for a card, you entomb it, and then when non-token horrors enter, you get a horror creature with death touch. That seems really annoying and limited, not gonna lie. Uh, Excel, Harmony Smasher. These these arts are very heavy on the visuals. <laughs> uh, once each turn, when you put one or more cards from your library into your graveyard, put one of them back into your hand. Sure, once each turn, yeah. Tap, mill one. Draw it on their turn, tap, yeah, it's fine. Hikane, 4-5, Trample for 4, whenever 2 or more creatures will attack, up to 1, can't block. Yell is the Shard, Flying 1-3, when you conjure 1 or more cards, you either draw a card, gain 3 life, or create an elemental. There's not a lot of conjure in the format yet, so this is probably fine, and 3 mana is, is a safe place to put it. Karis, 4 mana, 2-3, double strike. That's a lot. When it attacks, exile another target attacking human, return it to the battlefield, create another token, that's a... that does a lot, actually. If you create a clue or treasure, create both instead. 
Sacrifice 10 artifact tokens. Yeah, I'm going to have to flag Saren. There's a lot of ways of generating a lot, right? And being able to turn every one of those generates into two. Seems really good. Red-Eyed Jester, 2-2 two, two for 4. When you sack something, put a counter on him. Then sack a creature or token. Gains Death Touch and Lifelink. Jeez, that seems really good. At Uncommon? So you sack your token, it becomes a 3-3 three, three Death Touch Lifelink. You say... I mean, at least it doesn't become indestructible, but... I mean, you sack enough things, and that's that's kind of backbreaking. Especially in Limited. Vok, 2-2 two, two for 3, makes a 1-1, one, one, and then... Return up to one target permit you control and it can bring itself back. Oh, it's a sorcery. That's a pretty slow engine, so. Uh Trail of Blood. Yep, when you sack it, you or another artifact token, servo one, and it's two tap sack, draw, add one mana. It's a one, maybe something to keep in mind. We have stuff that makes artifacts cost less. Might be worth keeping an eye on. Agent of Digitas is a three, two for four. I'm surprised we're not using this cool colorless frame for Dream. Hmm, neat. If you cast it and you didn't spend two or more colors to cast it, so a mono color, you get a 3 2. So, two 3 2s for a mono color? Yeah, or obviously colorless, right? Aw, that's cute. Basic land cycling one. I think I actually like Color Savant. I, it's probably fine. Instant speed is not horrible, but I like the design. I like the border. I wish the dream was using this border. Okay, Kaide enters tap. You may spend. Okay, we have we have similar cards. I think these are I think these are reasonable. Um, it taps for black, and anything else that taps for that can also tap for black. And the cycling is 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 restrictive enough that this seems fine. Liminal space is very cool. Uh, I know I had I, I had already spoiled myself on it. Unfortunately, I had looked at the lands, and I I quite like a you know. So if you play it and your opponent has a land that you want and you got nothing else to do, you can just tap it and gain whatever that land is. And it keeps the ability, so you can keep doing it. Um, these are the rest of that cycle. So we've got Rail Line, Runaway, as a 2, 3, for 4. When it enters, you cash once for each station, whenever a station land you cash. That's probably safe. And these aren't stations, these ones. So it's just the common ones so far, I believe. All right. Onwards and upwards. Do we have Mythics? Yes, we have Mythics. So we're going we're gonna to try and hop to it a little more. We have ADI, Destiny Muse. Whenever a human you control dies, if it wasn't blocking, you get Destiny Strands. An enchantment token with humans you control get plus one plus one have exalted. Triggers only twice each turn. Mm. Interesting. It, this, again, this is the kind of card that's hard to evaluate. I think on the level is fine. Uh, it, the payoff can obviously get like tons of stuff, right? Plus one plus one and exalted is kind of weird. But like it's it's what shell is gonna pay for the one five and then you have to like there's other stuff to do right so again constructed wise probably fine but this does a lot right uh, bar hopping that's really funny each player draws up to four for three and as long as the player has four more cards in hand the spells that they cast cost one more all right displacer two four flying visions for three that's kind of gross uh, we've seen that before though uh, whenever it attacks you exile up to two non-land permanents without flying then return them to the battlefield under their owner's control with the flying counter the flavor text is kind of funny um probably fine like yeah you get rid of blockers but then if you do they come back with flying counters so you probably don't want to do that too much and you can do it with your own stuff if you need to yeah, all right. And I, I believe, what is it? Riel? Is it Riel? That's the... Nope. What's the god in, <laughs> in called time? So many cards. Raydan. You knew it started with an R. That's a 2-3 Flying Vigilance. Uh, have we not had... Have we not had... Okay, there we go. Wojak Investigator. Okay, it, it's recent, but it does exist. All right, we're good. We're good. Crafters of Fantasy... 2 4 for 3 can't cast non creature spells unless they control a legendary creature or a planeswalker. And then 2, they can create a 3 white human named Axon the Hero. Any player can activate it. Human Knight Rogue Wizard. They're playing DD essentially. Or it doesn't have to be DD. They're playing a tabletop role playing game, I would guess, right? Judging by the art. That's actually kind of cute. Um. The fact that it makes your opponents have to pay 2. 
to be able to cast non-creature spells. Interesting. Probably fine. What I wouldn't like is uh I don't know. I think this is it's it's annoying, but it's probably fine. Two four though. Jeez. That blocks that three two really well. So you can't really use it to attack, you just use it to turn off the ability. Doomsday Sirens, whatever non token control enters. Exile it if you do create a token that's a copy of it. It's a plus one and is a horror. Okay. So whatever you play is gonna be horror plus one plus one, and you double the enter the battlefield effect. That seems really good. Uh call to arms. Counter on each creature you control. And if you control none, you get three one ones. Okay. That's really good. Sword Saint, affinity for humans, first strike. When it enters or attacks, creatures control get plus one plus one. Are we gonna have a human deck? That could be interesting. No more heresies. Either you exile a non-land permanent, as long as it's exiled, they can pay two to get it back, or you get a tap two one human cleric creature token with lifelink. Yeah. I think both halves are, are, are balanced enough here. I don't know how to pronounce that. Rixel, unblemished. <laughs> one three lifelink opponents can activate non-man abilities only as a sorcery and only once each turn. Little, little nook go up here. Very neat. Secret binder. Non-mana abilities. It's not even non-creature spells. It's probably safe. Uh, whenever you surveil one more cards, you cash that many times. All right. Surveil two. You may shuffle if you do surveil two. It's the treasure tokens off of the stuff that's that's interesting, you know. But like, you need a really big density of surveil. But you cash that many times, you know. I surveil three. I get three treasures. Cost four. Something that I'll, I'll keep in mind on the, you know, I'll, I'll just make a note of, you know, check, you know, the repeating cashers, you know. There we go. Uh, flash, digital champion can only attack or block alone. It's a 1 1 for blue. Uh, this is part of a cycle of cards that are champions that can only go at it by themselves. And when you cast spells from outside your hand, it grows. Yep, that's probably fine. I mean,. I love that it works with all the tails and stuff, right? Like, I don't know, maybe. Gain control of any number of target non-land permanents with total mana value X or less. They each become an artifact and lose their other types. Yeah, the fact that it four, five, mana value, yeah, all right. I think my concern with this card is that it doesn't say non-token. And it's any number. I, I feel like Blue, 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 gain control of all tokens your opponent controls could be a problem. I mean, that's a hell of a sideboard. You really need to be packing uh, triple blue, but, you know, something to keep in mind. Lucid Nightmare, spend five or more mana to cast something you cash. Each sorcery card in your graveyard gets coalesces 4-4. Four, four. Mana cost plus four only once. Yeah, that's neat. Nonchalance, Servile 3, choose one. Either you draw a card... It's for three. Or reveal the top card if it's got mana value three or less, you can cast it. Yeah, alright. This actually is kind of neat. I like stuff that does cool stuff, especially at, like, at three. In fact, I think I'm going to put Lucid Nightmares into my uh, cards that stand out as being pretty cool. I like it a lot. Playing with Puddles, cast a non-creature spell, you get a 1-1 one, one human, and if it was from outside your hand, you get a... You may also create... Oh my gosh. Okay. Um... It costs five, it does nothing to turn it enters. That's a big ask. And then of course afterwards is 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 the play. So probably fine. A lot of two fours for three. These these three drops hold up the fort really well. When you conjure one or more cards, you cash. And when it attacks, you can pay one to conjure divination. Alright. One one pro S. When it enters or attacks, you get a tapped blue kite artifact with tap sack it, target creature gains flying. That's really good. And then three and a blue creature control with flying get plus one plus one. So we have a flying pro S one one for blue in the format. It hasn't seen play in a while, kind of. But this really needs you to keep using the kite. But the fact that you get one whenever you attack and it makes an artifact token, maybe maybe worth keeping an eye on. So let's just just for the the density of of artifact token going wide, especially because it can give anything flying. Very neat. Unspool forever. Get a 1-1. One, one. You may cast it from the battlefield. If you do, you add blue-blue. Until end of turn, it doesn't empty as steps and phases ends. Mm. So you pay 1 and a blue. You cast it. You get blue-blue. And a 1-1 one, one every turn? That seems... Mm. 
isn't that just you get a free 1-1 one, one flyer every turn? Okay, I'm going to have to keep an eye on that one. If I'm reading it wrong, I'm reading it wrong, but you, you pay the cost, the battlefield outside your hand, so you pay one in a blue, it enters, you get a 1-1 one, one flyer, and then you add blue-blue and it floats that mana until the end turn. I got a feeling that that one's not, not, a, not quite where I would want it in the format. It feels a little unsafe. Backstreets of Kaide, create three one ones, then you sacrifice any number of them. You can return a creature or planeswalker with mana less or equal number of creatures you control that have died this turn. Neat, pretty good. Once each turn when you sack a creature, add black black. Once each turn when you sack a non-creature, you get a one one. Kind of feeds into each other here. Cost black black. If you have a sack outlet and something. If you sack a non-creature permanent, so you crack a land, get the... It is once each turn. I appreciate the check, though, but definitely maybe something to keep in mind. Uh, Evangel of Metamorphosis. 1-2 Death Touch for black. All right. When a creature you control deals combat into an opponent, you can sack it to create 2-2 two, two black horror with Death Touch. That's a pretty big upgrade and a very cheap one, too. Just going to keep an eye on that one. Anything that has like reckless aggro. We've got decks that have these black cards that come back all the time. I feel this might be a little too strong in those decks. Fractia, Angel of None, Flying First Strike for three. When you sack it, you add a black, black, black and gain four life. I think for a four cost, that's probably fine. It's kind of sad that you have to, you know, sack the angel. Uh, Nicholas and Sereni, two mana, one, two lifelink, plus one. It deals X damage to target player or planeswalker, where X is the number of loyalty abilities you've activated this turn. And that counts as a loyalty ability. So if you have any other walkers and you'll gain life, this is really good. A lot of these rares are doing a lot is what I'm noticing. I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to put a lot of them on my, my watch list just because of, uh, yeah, just because of like the stuff that they do. I mean, this is on two. So you plus one right away, right? So you deal a damage, gain a life. Then the following turn, because you can't attack it like a planeswalker. Uh, let's say you drop a three drop planeswalker. You do it now and it's two and two and then kind of spirals out a little bit. So I don't want to be putting so many cards on my little watch list, but I really need to do my due diligence and keep an eye on stuff. Also, it's hilarious that it's an umbrella elf. Like, I don't know what to say about that. That's hilarious. Um, One, two. Okay, we're seeing a little similarity here. When it enters the beginning of your upkeep, you can search your library for a card with mana value three or less, put into your graveyard, then shuffle, and the first spell you cast from your graveyard each turn costs one mana of any color less. Uh, that's a really cheap go put something in your yard, honestly. And I know there's some decks, and the fact that it's beginning of your upkeep every turn, I don't think that's safe. There's a lot of these black, like I was talking about earlier, a lot of these black recurring creatures. And the fact that it's just every turn I go pick one, put it in the yard, put it in the yard, right? And if any of them are cast from the yard, they cost one. It's doing a lot. Cards cards don't need to be enters and at your upkeep, I think, all the time for all the value. You know, sometimes I feel things would be a little safer when, when they do it. Maybe once or, you know. 3-4 for 3, okay. If you put another horror card into your graveyard from anywhere, you can instead exile it, and as long as it's exiled, you can be 2. Alright, so it saves your, your horrors from ever leaving. Um, it's, it's yeah, alright. Oh, hey, we have a Wiry back. Interesting. Uh, and exactly one other creature attack. They conjure eternal nightmares into their hand, then draw a card unless that player discards a card. It's a sorcery with when you discard or reveal eternal nightmares, exile it, you lose 3 life. Oh, it's kind of like in, in, in Hearthstone, kind of like the, the junking the hand. Um, okay, I think I think we're at the point where we have some conjure stuff. I'm, I'm okay with conjuring, I think, into opponent's hands. Yeah, I think it's fine. Alicia, the final dawn, one in a red, one, two, pro is haste. Beginning of your end step, if it has power three or greater, you get scorch. Uh, so what is it? You do on on two, and then on three you go scorch, scorch, or any you know like bolt, bolt. It goes up to three, and then you get another scorch, and that sort of keeps it in the loop. But it's legendary. I mean, any card that puts counter is just you know keep getting a scorch. So I'm gonna keep in mind. Again, I think it's kind of neat though. 
Cascading Vengeance, create a 1-1 one, one white human that gains haste. Beginning of your second main phase, if two or more creatures you control attack this turn, put a tempo on it. Uh, it deals one damage to each opponent for each tempo counter on it. Otherwise, sack. Okay, so you've got to always attack with two creatures. So turn one, you play something. Turn two, you play this. That You swing with both. It gets a tempo, deals a extra damage. But if you don't manage to swing with two things next turn, you crack. Yeah, that's probably fine. Idol of Playthings... 3-5 for 4, target creature can't block when it attacks. Whenever a player casts a non-horror, non-revelation spell, idol deals 2 damage. It's fine. 3 damage each creature for 5. Exile cards from the top of your library equal to the number of creatures that were dealt excess damage. Equal to the number of creatures dealt excess damage. Dealt this... I think there's a double dealt here. Until the end of your turn, you may play those cards. Situational enough. But that can draw a lot of cards. Might be a good top end sweep for some big red decks. Speaking of Kalthas, the 3 4 for 3 with Kicker, 1 and a red. We're seeing a lot of these one off keywords here. Um, I'm not sure if the density is starting to bother me, but I mean, you know, tools are made to be used. As long as you spent 5 or more mana to cast a spell this turn, just your creatures have plus 2 plus 0 in haste. Dang. So obviously, if, if you kick, that's it, right? It's a. 5-4 haste, and then on future turns, if ever you cast 5 drops, they also get plus 2 plus 0 in haste. I think it's exciting. I think being a 3-4 for 3, though, is kind of concerning, so... Uh, things to keep in mind. And it's all creatures you control, not just that one. So, you know. Let's... Put a quick note here. Kyle Thess, the Pale turn. Power Storming Session. If it's searching for deal combat damage, you add that much red mana instead. You don't lose this mana steps and phases in terms of... Okay. And then X red, sack it. A creature gets plus X plus X and gains haste. Is this safe? I mean, it's really weird, right? Like, you throw out, let's say, 3 or 4 damage. And you'll get a 3 or 4 mana floating till the next turn. And then you cash it in. Or you just use it to cast instants and sorceries, right? But it costs 3. Interesting. Okay. Prototype weapon enters, deals 2 damage to a creature or planeswalker, and then you can sack an artifact. The next time a spell or ability would deal damage this turn, it deals an extra 2. It seems pretty decent, actually. Um, the first one can't hit the face, but it does function as a little bit of removal. And then what? Tap, sacrifice a treasure or an artifact, uh, clue, or it could also be prototype weapon, and you just add plus 2. Yeah. Slicer of Simplicity, plant horror. You can discard a horror or revelation. If you do, you draw 2. And it becomes a copy of that card until end of turn, except it's a horror creature. Is that safe? <laughs> it's a three drop. There's some revelations, though, that are absolutely huge. And the fact that you draw as well. Like, if it was just, you know, pitch, right? If it was just discard a horror revelation, it becomes a copy of it. But uh, it also draws you two cards, you know? Kind of nuts. First strike 3-3 three, three, when it deals damage. Add that much red mana. Really good. Enigmatic Prismata, 5 mana. Yeah, so the rares, we're seeing that the rares in this set are are, are really are, are up there. I think uh I think I put quite a few of them on my little watch list here now. The Angel Upkeep, put a Paradise Counter. Yep. Whenever you tap a permanent for mana, you add one mana of any color or put two counters on it. Kind of neat. Five mana is probably safe. Gruesome reassembly, that's a lot of stuff. Let's see. Sacrifice any number of creatures. You search your library for up to that many creature cards with total mana value less than or equal to the total mana value of creatures sacked this way. Put them onto the battlefield. They each enter with two plus one plus one. I don't know if it needs the extra boost. You're just converting your board, right? And because you're going mana value to mana value, that's a lot of wacky things you can do. Obviously, what's nice is that tokens don't add anything except for that many, right? Um, so if I sacrifice like a five drop and then f a bunch of other tokens, I can go get a bunch of lower drops. Feels like this is the kind of thing that someone's going to build the shell, someone who's better at building combo shells than me and is just going to make a, a deck that has, you know, an enter, something that gives a hay, something that does something, the two extra counters, and then, and then it wins, right? Harbinger 5, and when it enters or attacks, you can return a land you control to its owner's hand. If you do, conjure forest onto the battlefield tapped pretty cool um let me think about it 
now that I'm thinking, I might have mis I might have misevaluated that one that we saw at I believe common where I think it was the same thing. Because you pay two, you play it, you bring the land back, and you float. So it doesn't actually get you a land. It, it draws you a land rather than ramps you. So this this draws you a forest, and then it's got crew three. I actually kind of like it. I mean, you got to throw something decent in it to get to the four five. But being able to keep, you know, getting extra drawing lands is nice. Sack a creature, draw cards, gain life equal to its toughness. And if it was a token, you get a four four black horror. That seems really good. Sorcery speed is thankfully not as bad as it could be. Live large, flash, whenever a creature an opponent controls enters, cast a creature spell with greater power than it from your hand. Um, You still have to pay for it. Creature spells cast this way, enter with two plus one plus one to trample. Okay, it's actually kind of interesting. Lunar Contessa, four, three, four, three, enters or attacks, you paradise on a human, on each other human you control. And if it already had paradise, you put a plus one or a vigilance. That's... That's kind of nuts. One Hierarch Ranger or a Mana Dork is already a mana, though. So Paradise Counter actually doesn't... Yeah, all right. Uh, Mist and Charm Resplendent, 1-1 one, one for 2. And when it attacks, its base power and toughness becomes equal to target attacking creatture's power and toughness. So it's, it's just it becomes the biggest thing on the board. I, th I think this is fine compared to some of the other crazy two drops that we have. All right, let's wrap this up. Skylight Aspirant, 2-2 two, two for... Re for one in a green reach, put one or more cards from your library into your graveyard. You can exile it if you do return to the battlefield with that many plus one plus one counters on it. So you mill three and it comes back as a five five. That's that's kind of that's kind of scary. <laughs> and of course, if ever you okay, actually, my concern with this one is more that someone tries to remove it. You can just go like tap mill one. And then it exiles, and it'll come right back as a 3-3. Three, three. Like, that's kind of... That's kind of creepy. It's kind of nuts. All right, Social Executioner. I, I, I put a uh, Skylight... I wrote that completely wrong. I wrote Assembly for some reason. It's Skylight Aspirant. I think that's going on my list. Uh, Trample Vigilance, 5-4. I mean, your end step. Any player may create... A 1-1 one, one white human creature token, and it gets plus one plus one for each human the defending player controls. It's also a 5-4 Trample Vigilance, gosh. Whoa, that must be absolutely brutal and limited. Uh, after Image Adept, 3 mana, 2-1. As long as you control an artifact token, it gets plus two plus one, so it's a 4-2. And when it attacks, if it's not a token, you create a token that's a copy of an attacking creature you control. Except that 0-0 zero, zero isn't legendary, enters tap and attacking. Okay, so... When it attacks, it becomes a 4-2, and it makes a 2-1. But you can also create any other attacking creature. Okay. Bloodbath Renegades is a death touch menace, 2-2 two, two for 3. has to be blocked if able, and suddenly alert, as an instant tail is untap any number of target creatures. Instant tails are always kind of risky. This is... but I think this is fine. Genesis Chamber, you destroy a non-land creature... Sorry, non-land, non-creature permanent... So, you know, create an XX green Hydra token with Tremble where X was its mana value. That's fine. If someone wants to cheat out a 7 drop and get Genesis Chambered for it, I'm okay with that. Gnarled Spire is a 3 mana Trample Indestructible 6-6, six, six, but can't attack or block unless you control 4 or more other horrors. And whenever another non-token horror you control deals combat damage to a player, you can create a token that's a copy of it. Except it's 1-1 one, one isn't legendary. Dang. This would be a really cool commander, but it's not legendary. Which, again, means you can run multiples. Could be kind of scary. The fact that it has indestructible is is, is kind of concerning here. It's going to be hard to get rid of, except with like you know out of uh, out of body experiences. Just keep an eye on that. Because if it comes down turn three and you've already got a one and a two drop four and they can hit, you're already at the four, right? And then that's a blocker on the next turn. So, uh, highest in Azor Princess, five mana, three for flash. Artists and sorceries have flash. You draw a card, gain three life. Sure. Ideological Schism, you choose Military Schism, okay, counter whenever a creature control attacks, or whenever you create a token, it gets a Paradise. Interesting. Does that loop with anything? Like, every time you create... Uh, it does a lot, though. Cura of the Zombie Network, that's really sick art in the set. 4-5 for 5, when a non-skeleton creature dies, you can pay 2 if you do create a token, it's a copy of it, but it's a 2-2 two, two black skeleton. Okay, seeing a lot of, like, if something dies, but you make... Sack two other things to destroy a creature. Activate only once each turn and only as a sorcery. Okay. I like that it's pay. 
Like, you know? Raven Requiems, another part of a really long cycle of two drops that make flying birds and have triggers. So whenever you cast a spell from outside your hand, you get a bird with flying and haste. And whenever three or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, you can sack one of them to make that player lose three life, sack a non- so you torment them. They lose three life, sack a non-land, and discard a card. Jeez. Uh, ricochet through hell, five mana, you put a spell or a non-token non-land permit on the bottom of its owner's library. Then they exile cards from the top of their library until they exile a card that shares a card type with it. And you can cast that card without paying its mana cost. That's pretty backbreaking. Um, of course, the randomness might mean it's, it's it's fine. I mean, could be risky. Five mana, though. I mean, if you're holding up five mana and you fire it off, I mean, like, it is what it is. We haven't seen any uh, blackouts, I believe, at, uh, at rare, huh? Interesting. I was wondering if we were going to see any. It feels like we hadn't seen some in some time. Um, Solar Torrent. When you cast this spell, you exile any number of red and or green cards from your hand. You can play those cards this turn, but you copy Solar Torrent for each card exiled this way. And it's three damage to a creature or Planeswalker. You gain three life. I'm happy it doesn't go face. That's for sure. Um, and you can still play the cards that you exiled. Yeah, I mean, if you're paying four mana, you're exiling and you could still have cast it. Double removal could be something to keep in mind. I think the mana value on it and the fact that it's sorcery means it's probably safe and it doesn't go face. So, uh, the Aiken Veil being your end step is a shrine. If a land you control entered this turn, you conjure divination to your hand, otherwise, conjure a forest. I'm glad that we're sticking to these two cards, it does make things a little easier. Green gets the forest, blue gets the divinations. So, if you didn't play a land, you do get a forest. And if you did play a land, you get a divination. That's actually really good. Thankfully, it's legendary. Uh, abandoned train yard. Whenever a station enters, you gain a life. You control seven or more stations. You draw, and it turns stations into vehicles. Again, I don't think we're seeing the stations, so this is more of a limited thing. Uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Heaven is forged from steel is this very cool name. Puts a paradise counter on each land you control for two, so you pay two... Not sure this... Mm, something's wrong here. I don't like that. When it enters, do it? Or is it a sorcery and it has blackout? So it fixes your whole your current board or it drops in as a land. Which again, if everything's being blacked out, this fixes a lot of them. Something to keep in mind here. And there's definitely... Uh, I'm definitely to know is what type is Heaven is Forged from Steel. Small mistake, but you know something to keep in mind. Thunder Stage, add a man of any color only to cast a spell activate abilities with X and its mana cost, and then it puts an all counter when you do. And when the fifth is put on Thunder Stage, you draw five cards and gain five life. And then you have to exile Thunder Stage. It's not legendary, so you can get multiple of these going up at the same time. Seems kind of risky, but it has to have X and its mana cost. I'm sure someone can build a really, a really crazy deck that has activated abilities or spells with X's and then draw five, gain five. Something to keep in mind. That seems like a lot. I mean, you could do with a lot smaller than I, I guess. I know the five, 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 but I feel like maybe this should be a little smaller on the payoff. I'm happy it exiles. Uh, VL's perch opponents get to surveil two when you drop it because it taps for black and you can pay two tap surveil two. So a little bit of a downside is you let the opponent, you know, scoot around their surveil and then, but you can keep doing it. There's one of those instances that said, hey, if we get away to doing a lot of repeatable, a repeated surveil. All right, almost done. We're hitting over to Mythic. Callista, Gilded Mixologist. It's got Slight. Okay, another mechanic coming back. Two, two for two. You can cast a spell as though it had Flash if you pay one more. I'm almost wondering if you just don't use Slight and you just type that out, you know? When it enters, if you cast her, you gain protection from everything until end of turn. So it's a three mana Flash, protection from everything. That seems kind of, like, really, really good. Might be worth keeping an eye on. Uh, white Lies. When you finish exiling cards from anywhere, you gain two life. Red, sack a non-land permanent. Exile the top card of your library. You can play it this turn, but at the beginning of your next end step, you have to sacrifice White Lies. Interesting. Neat. I kind of like it. Um, a lot of life, though. Like, if you, like, late game, if you go, like, you know, red, 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 like, you do a bunch of stuff, that can be a lot of life, especially against, like, an aggro deck. Uh, Catalepsis. Hey, 
Isn't that the word that we saw in the uh, set details? Wayward, when you cast a spell from outside your hand, you can copy it. You can choose new targets for the copy. It triggers only twice each turn. Yeah, I don't think you're doing it ever more than twice each turn. I'm just happy that this is there so it's not infinite, right? Um, that's a lot of copying, though. Uh, Necroelysia, black, black, black. Whenever a non-token creature dies, you put a lore counter on it. And again, if you're upkeep, you create a tapped 1-1 one, one white horror creature token with tap, sack it, add black for each lore counter on Necroelysia. Eee. That can start making a lot of things. Thankfully, they're tapped for that turn, but dang. Spark Hunter, Kajiwara, 5 mana. Whenever you activate one of... All right, one of A's loyalty. I wonder if this was a different name before, because it says IE, but it's, I don't know. This seems a little odd. Whenever you activate one of IE's loyalty abilities, create a 2-2 colorless soldier artifact creature token with that ability, except it costs plus one to activate. Oh, that's, that's one of the coolest lines of text I've ever seen on the Planeswalker. So plus one, it deals a damage to a player, Planeswalker, you gain a life. And then it will create a 2-2 soldier that has that ability. And you can go plus one, deals a damage target player, Planeswalker, you gain one life. Okay. Except it costs plus one. And then if you do minus three, it's draw a card, lose a life. And they become a 2-2 with plus one, draw a card, you lose a life. And if you manage to pull off your ult, each opponent sacks a permanent and discards a card. You get a soldier that has that. Oof. I... I think the loyalty abilities are safe enough. It doesn't remove creatures, right? Which is important because it makes a lot of soldiers, right? That will block for you. I don't know. That's kind of nuts. I am going to make a note of it. And I'm just definitely going to ask about if the name is correct. Because it does have the right Planeswalker type. But the name here is, uh, is a little different. Kajiwara. Alrighty, what do we got next? Atheon the Suncaster. It's an indestructible four mana umbrella artifact. <laughs> Seems a little odd. Whenever you activate a loyalty ability for each loyalty counter added or spent as a cost to it, it deals that much damage to any target. It can be your commander and it plus ones for a man. This is such a weird card. Okay, so if you spend three loyalty, it then deals three damage. It costs four though to get out. It's interesting. It's an exciting commander. It's a five-color commander, like Planeswalkers, right? Maybe I wish this was had a had a cap on it on Atheon, right? Something to keep in mind. How many more do we have? Oof, quite a few more mythics. There's more than I than I thought. All right, King of Husks, six mana, six six. When it enters or attacks, you put an ignite counter on a permanent. As long as it has an ignite counter, it has the beginning of your upkeep. It deals two damage to you, then you can sacrifice it. Yeah, that's probably fine. Has Rain, Vertical Stampede, 7 mana, 7-7. Seven, seven. When it enters, other creatures you control get plus X, plus X, and gain Trample until end of turn. Okay, where X was the excess mana you paid. When you cast a spell or activate an ability with X in its cost, you may have X become 7 afterwards. That's kind of cool. Idyllic Idol, 4 mana for a 4-2. Enter, search your library for any number of land cards. You put them into your graveyard and you shuffle. Then you get Idol's Blessings, a green enchantment with you can play land cards from your graveyard. That's really cool. I like that. IQ never sleeps. Hey, I'll always love it when someone puts a card with the set name in it. Uh, it's a one white, blue, black, red, everything but green. Can't be countered. You exile all non-land permanents, all graveyards, and the top 15 cards of each library, and IQ never sleeps. That's probably fine. I mean, I, there's ways of getting perfect gold, and the fact it can't be countered. Um, tentatively fine, right? All right, Iraqi Network Cleaner is an all-color 5-5-5. Five, five, five. Pardon, there's an extra 5 there. A 5-5-4-5. Five, five, five. You can play cards from your hand as though they had Blackout. That's cool. And permanents you control with no name have tap cash. Very cool. And yeah, the Blackout cards are, are face-down cards with no name, right? So, neat. Very cool. Ezrin Steelwing Ascendant. 4 mana, 4, 3, flying, first strike, lifelink. You have each end step, you may end the turn. Wild. It's the kind of thing that, it, would it really do much? Exile all spells, yeah, 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 discards down. Essentially, they don't get their end, okay. Really wild. Flying, first strike, lifelink, 4, 3, for 4 is fine, so. 
Izalani, Goddess in White, Flying, f uh, sorry, First Strike, Lifelink Haste, 5-5 five, five for 7, 3 white, blue, black, red. When you spend one or more mana to cast, you exile that many cards from the top of your library, then return any number of those cards with different mana values to your hand. So if you pay 7, you exile 7 cards on top of your library, and then for each number, that's that's a lot. But you have to spend the mana to cast, so you don't get it on the cheat like a grizzle brand. Okay. Give the first Nightwalker, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, for a 6, 6, Death Touch, Life Like Haste. Enter as you discard your hand, draw any number of cards, and you lose 3 life for each card drawn this way. Sure. Death Touch, Life Like Haste is kind of scary, though. Like, who cares about the rest? Like, you're... Th this is more Grizzle brand, honestly, than anything else here. Alright. I'll just keep an eye on Kiv here. Uh, Shiroyuki, the every girl, two mana walkers. Whenever you conjure one or more cards, put a loyalty counter on Shiroyuki. You get a... So it draws a basic land for plus one. It's actually not bad, honestly. Conjure Divination for a flat zero, right? And then minus five, get an emblem with spells you cast, cost one less, and you may play an additional land. I like I like the toolbox. I don't know if it's as safe as a two drop, right? Because that's every turn you're just drawing a card. This set has so many cool things, but there are some scary things in these rares and, and mythics. It feels like they just they do so much, you know. And I know Wizards cards sometimes do that, but it's just sometimes it just is overwhelming when you see so many cards like that. Uh, Tuka, who deals with devils, two blue, black, red for a 4 6. Twice during each of your turns, you can cast a creature spell from a graveyard. Whenever a creature dies during your turn, you add two mana in any combination of colors, but you can't spend it to cast spells from your hand. All right. There's some like graveyard shenanigans there, and it's a 4 6, but being five mana is probably on the safe for line to plays. Here's another Vl. We have one in the format, but this is Vl AQ's anti hero. White, black for a 2 3. Lifelink, pro, legendary. That's already a lot. My gosh. And when it enters, you can pay two and a black. If you do, bring back a card with a loyalty ability from your graveyard to the battlefield with a lifelink counter. Okay, so five mana to get that to reanimate a walker or anything else with a loyalty ability, but two, three lifelink pro legendary, yeah? Not bad. Uh, Windmere, Scarlet Sentinel. It's kind of funny how we're seeing another Windmere here because it was in uh, the previous set that we looked at. So it's a three mana, creatures can't attack you. Or non Windmere Planeswalkers you control. See, now I'm a little more concerned when it's cheap like this, right? And then it's plus one until your next turn. Up to one target creature must attack and block if able. So you can actually force things to, like, kind of bump into this. I don't know. Until end of turn, you get a 4 4 Flyer Indestructible. And then minus five, exile a creature. And it costs an additional plus two to activate if it targets a tapped creature. Wild. Okay. I'm never a fan of the, you know, force people to have to go into the Planeswalkers, but we'll see. We'll see. It doesn't, at least it doesn't kill things like Calro used to do. Azalea, Otherworld Executioner, it's a 3 for a 3 2. When it enters, you get six duplicates of Reality Slash. For each legendary god you control, you can cast one of them without paying the mana cost, and then the rest go into your main library. I mean, it has to say main library because we have archives in the format. Okay, so if you don't have any legendary gods, you simply get six of them into your deck, and they cost four. They have exile a non-land permanent draw card. Those aren't bad cards to fill fill up your deck with. And I believe we have to just check the special real quick. So there's the divination. I'm gonna go real quick to show you the conjure stuff. There's divination. There's eternal nightmares. Uh, there's reality slash. There we go. So it's conjurable and it cannot start in your deck. So you can't just you know run them. Uh, and then we have the special guests. So some of them are from cards already in the format. So, and then some of them are canon cards. So Witness the Divine is already in the format. Surge of Brilliance would be coming in, but I think it's an okay card to have as a special guest. Come Back Wrong is from, you know, Duskmorn, which isn't out yet. So nice to see that there. Feels fine. Human Frailty is already in the format. Salvage is already in the format. Risk Factor is probably fine. Apex Abomination is already in the format. So is Lone Survivor. So is VL Undercity Wayfarer. And so is Reliquary Tower. So, whew. And uh, yeah, wow. That was AQ Never Sleeps. Uh, it's a regular size set, but it definitely feels like it has a lot. I was finding myself putting down a lot of cards into the Keep an Eye On bucket, just because it seems like there's a lot going on with some of these rares and mythics, and I would want to keep an eye. Uh, I'm happy that we have trigger only twice each turn because that means that, you know, 
we don't have to worry too much about infinites but uh there's other things that could happen so uh the art direction is great uh, i wish i had the time to read like every flavor text for these kind of reviews i'm definitely going to go back it definitely seems like a set that i'm interested in drafting i feel the power level is pretty high but it must be a really exciting uh set to draft so uh nix honestly you made something really cool you should be really proud of the product that you have here uh it looks great it looks neat and i'm sure there's a huge audience for for this kind of thing so uh and it definitely uh would be at home alongside some of the uh other sets that we have in the format like uh, karina's explorations for example you know who has a similar uh uh, I guess a little different. Oh, there we go. You know, similar style of vibes and stuff. So great job. And uh, with that, I'm going to take a small break. going to keep uploading the previous videos and start working on this one. And I'm going to hope to maybe get uh, at least two other sets reviewed uh, today. I know I wanted to do all 11, uh, but these are still hitting an hour each. So uh, I feel we're going to have to drop down a little bit and manage my expectations. And maybe we're just going to knock out four today, maybe do another four tomorrow and then three before I leave on uh on a trip for a little bit. So thanks again for tuning in. Uh, Nix, I hope this is useful for you and uh, I'll see you in the next video.